In this video, I'm going to show you how to update the firmware on your iPolo G1 Mini Grin ASIC Miner. iPolo's first Mini ASIC Miner was the G1 Mini, and it came out, I believe it was towards the end of 2020, uh, or I think around October of 2020. And since then, they've released a couple firmware upgrades that you can apply to your ASIC. Now, one of the things that they did is they actually opted to go with a router firmware. So they're running OpenWRT. And here you can see I'm at the login screen for the G1 Mini. So this is a little bit different than a typical ASIC. We're going to go ahead and log in. And right off the bat, what you're going to see is you're going to see um, things that look a little bit odd, right? Like if you look at status, you can see routes, you can see kernel logs. Looking at the system, you see all kinds of odd things, especially with network, right? You can see your routes and everything. And that's because they are running a, they're running basically an open source router firmware uh, with basically CG miner applied on top of it. All the way at the top here, you're gonna see Encryption Computing Dedicated Hardware Management System and our version. So we're currently on version 2.4.9. And now what we're going to do, we're going to head on over to the iPolo website. And what you want to do is you want to go to support. After you close all the pop-ups, support firmware download. Go to G series firmware. And here you're going to look at this version and you can see they have released version 2.52. And we're currently on 2.4.9. So we are definitely going to upgrade. And the one thing I will say with 2.4.9, it had included a massive hash rate boost for Mimblewimble. So if you're not familiar with the G1 Mini, it supports both the Kaka 32 and the C31 algos. Uh, it does support algo switching, so you can switch between those algos and mine the coins. Essentially what you're looking at is Grin on C32 and Mimblewimble coin on C31. Well, I'm currently mining Grin, but what we're going to do is we are going to click this. It's going to take us over to this really weird website, but this is authentic. I'm going to go ahead and download it. You're going to say download executable file. Now if we head back over here, and we can go to a backup slash flash firmware. And the first thing I like to do before I flash, I like to generate an archive. So we're going to go ahead and do that. That's going to back up our existing firmware. And then I'm going to say choose file. I'm going to get my downloads. I'm going to pick not the backup file, but the actual upgrade file to 252. I'm going to say keep settings. This should keep my pull configuration. If you don't check this, then it will wipe pretty much everything and do like a what would be a fresh clean image. We're going to say flash image. And here it's going to give you the checksum so that you can validate that. We're going to go ahead and say proceed. And here it's going to say the system's flashing. Don't power off the device. Wait a few minutes before you try to reconnect. It might be necessary to renew the address on your computer to reach the device again depending on your settings. Essentially, if you have this thing hooked up, and you don't have a static IP on it, it's possible that when it essentially is going to flash, reboot, it's possible it could get a brand new IP address. We're basically just going to let this sit here for a minute. In my case, it should retain my IP of 192.168.1.101. We're just going to give this a minute and I'll see you back when it's done updating. All right, and it looks like it's done. It actually took me back to the login screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to log in again. I'm logged in. And now we can see we are on version 2.5.2 .2, and it is ramping up. So let's make sure we still have a computing of at least 1.2 graphs per second. Right, hash rate has settled pretty good, and so we are sitting at 1.23 graphs per second, which is right on par with what we should be seeing. So that is nice to see. Let's go ahead and head over to normal configuration. And let's just check. 
it looks like it actually reset my fan settings. So I'm going to go ahead and fix these real quick. I want temperature 1. Um, the alarm temp can be at 90. The minimum fan range, we want 20 here. And we want 30 on the default fan. Want auto control. Three minute on the 100% fan on boot. And let's go ahead and save and apply this. This will lower the fan speeds if they don't have to be cranked up that high. And that's pretty much it. That'll lower the fans by about 100 RPM or so. And once hash rate settles in, everything should be settling at sub 70 degrees. Should be good. That's all there is to updating your firmware.